<laughs> Let's see which angle's better. Hello, we play viewers. Okay. Here we are having a <laughs> often fun little group doing chair repair or chair caning. And today we're doing. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Maggie. We're we're desperately in need of help. Do you want to come and work out here for like a week or two? We we got an email saying we need help immediately. Maggie is in Ohio, I believe, and she's going to be moving to Massachusetts soon. Yeah, the, vi the video has begun. So who's Maggie? Oh, you have a job already. Okay. So, so I'm trying to recruit people. If you know of anybody, Maggie, let us know immediately. We're desperate. So anyway, that wasn't the subject of today's broadcast, but it was a good one. So we have all these chairs on the front porch. You can see in the, in the background and they get, <laughs> get kind of beat up sometimes. And so this group comes out a few times a year and it's a lovely project. This woman here in, in front of us is instructing. Hi. And this woman is learning. Hi. Learning. First time today. First time today, cool. And the seats. Yeah, I do. Thank you, Mackie. I, I try to make them interesting. I was looking forward to this one when I saw Jean, the, that's Jean right here, when I saw her the other day and she told me their group was coming out, I said this is going to be a cool scope. Because how often do you see people fixing chairs, right? And, and, and Jean, how long does a seat take? A seat takes a beginner 8 to 12 hours. So 8, eight to 12 hours. Yeah, this is like basket weaving. And these seats, these are killers. It's 8 to 12 hours for a beginner. Probably not much better if you're fast. So, what I like doing is the backs of the chairs because you usually can work with somebody else and it goes a whole lot faster. For some reason, two don't stay. So, I'm being quiet while, while Jean's giving instructions. Now, now it's enough is that the, the corner is... Hey, Diane. Yeah, so for the people that just joined, we have this group that comes out. Jean organizes uh, volunteers. There's Jean on the left, smiling. And a few times a year, they, they take these, these broken down rocking chairs and, and redo the seats, which takes 8 to 12 hours a seat. Or they do Carolyn. the backs. Carolyn is the master instructor. Yeah. She taught me. She I know. Carolyn taught me too. Yeah. Yeah. And and then I think I told Carolyn, I think I told you this story, but two years after you taught me, I had to run a class here. <laughs> Wonderful. Because the instructor had only looked at the internet and never done it before. <laughs> and and I thought I was more experienced. <laughs> and it, it kind of it kind of worked out. But it was pretty hilarious. I, I wasn't planning to lead a class that day. <laughs> You know what had never occurred to me? If you were in the, if the sun were being in a certain direction while you were checking, you get a really weird sun to you. Yeah, yeah, impromptu classes, Diane. So the process is pretty straightforward. You just kind of weave it in and out. Well, this is the easy part. This is the easy part. Then you got to the other part. The, re the rest of it's harder. Then once it gets closer and closer together, it's harder. Once you're near the edge. And the, ends are hard. And the initial wrap is challenging. Yeah, we missed that stage. And then, of course, there's these other so kinds now, of seats yeah, over so here. Now, now what you want to do is you've got three together. Yeah, keep it wet. So we'll, we'll, we'll transit over to the other side, where the experts are working on a different kind. You meet your plant pot holders. Oh, that would be cool. So these are the more complicated chairs. Now, did you have to weave this whole thing, or is that yeah, mesh? So yes. You purchase so that. Six, six, no, you, you do it. You do it. You do that whole thing. It's manual. That's yeah. all manual. Jean has got the ones over there that are pre-woven. You know, right, right. And the, because these have holes, so these have to be, those don't have holes, so yeah. that has a channel. So, so Diane in Scotland is watching, and she says, wow, ladies. I think she realizes how hard the how how hard a job this is. By, by the way, this this video is interactive. I have I have three live viewers. It's not a recording. This is a beautiful pattern. I like. Isn't this a beautiful pattern? I love that pattern. Yeah, me too. And here, I use use the knife and all. Now we're finishing them off. Yeah. 
So, so these were in in like a, a holding state for a while. They were partially done, and this is a partially done. All right here, I'll show you another partially done one that Carolyn pointed out. There are six layers. Six layers. How long does a seat like this take? That has four. At least eight, if you know what you're doing. Eight hours, if you know what you're doing. More, if you make a blunder. More if you're a student. More if you're a student. It's probably going to be 16 hours for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the thing about coming out here. You're not under the gun for, for production. No, you can do it. You just knock it back. Oh, you haven't seen the beaten. And I teach, <laughs> class. <laughs> I teach classes, and uh, classroom time is six hours. Two hours one week, two hours one week, two hours four weeks. You haven't seen the true cane yet. Some of them don't do any homework. That's why I like working on the backs. Those don't take so long, and you can see your job is finished. Right, right. Did you go down to the pier and fake them out? So this is a very precise job. You have to weave, weave in and out through the little holes. Yeah. Well, on the, on the edge. This is the edging. This is the edging. And this one's almost finished. That covers up the it covers up the holes. The yeah. wider piece that goes right. around the edge. So. So it looks like this is all very hello, eight shacks, B shacks. So people that are just joining, we have a, a little chair caning repair team out here at Star Island. They come out a couple times a year when there's room for them and housing. Hey Karen, this is one of my favorite activities to, to both watch and participate in. I think the last time I was here I did a seat, or a piece of a seat. Yeah. Yes, oh, I'm, yeah. you worked on something. Yeah. But I like working on the backs. Rock. All right, so Home Diane stage. in Scotland says, brilliant work, ladies. I've got to go back to her own work. Oh, well, thank you, Diane. Yep, I think they heard you. She's a lot of fun. It definitely, on the backs, it takes two people. Because oh, yeah, it, it goes so chair. much better. Right. So I've, I've brought some. So, so B-Shacks, are you interested in, in chair repair? This is a, definitely a scope you would not normally uh, run across. Now Jean is taking out the old. All right, we're gonna edge. we're gonna we're gonna slide over to Jean and see what she's knocking out. Different style. Different, Different style. style. I did that last year. So so that's that's not a straw hat. That's pre-woven cane that someone's butt print. Butt print through. or some small. <laughs> hey, Cena, or some and small child tried to climb up on a chair. So you might. Think that this was easier because it was pre-woven. No. The challenging part you have, of to, this you have to cut it to size. Is, and no, is getting the old. All right. So out. here, let's 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 pay attention to what the challenging it part takes is. Anywhere from two to twelve hours to clean out the groove. Twelve the hours. Groove. Yes, the twelve hours was the longest one of these took me. Holy um, cow! And you have to clean the groove out, and then once you clean the groove out, you can put a pre-cut material in in less than an hour. But it's cleaning the groove out that's the worst. All right, so we're going to watch, watch. It's, it's we're going to watch, simple watch in Jean. the sense you... The process is simple, but it's very tedious. You don't want to, you don't want to harm anything. the outer wood. Yeah. In a, so if you're going to do anything, you Hi, damage David. the inner wood. And you have to get the old spline out and just really literally chisel it out a little bit at a time. So, so in a certain sense, that makes you a chiseler. Yeah. And different chisels and screwdrivers and stuff work. For, but again, so if you're going to, it's a very, it's a very tight fit. If you're going to, it's glued in there. Oh, it's glued in there. And some of the um, glue that they used 50 and 100 years ago. So how, how old are these seats? Could be 100 years old. Wow, and they lasted 100 years. Yep, and it could be that um, they used glue made of like horses oh, sure. and cow hooves oh, sure. and stuff. Yep. So the glues that they used were meant to last and they clearly well, did. And they they should, outlasted and they the seat. Yeah. So, but the challenge is getting it out without ruining the appearance right, the, of the outer yep, wood. Yep. And if you have to nick something, you nick the inner wood that's going to be cut rather than the yep. outside. Don't want to scar it.
spoke Polish and another spoke Greek. So it's, it, you, <laughs> in your best of all possible worlds, like when you do this, English, the whole spline comes out. But in this case, you can see it's splitting, so I'm going to have to go in there with a chisel and go even and scrape, and scrape, and scrape all that out yeah. a little bit at a time. A little. Once in a while, the two-hour ones I've lucked out, and the whole spline comes out because whoever put it in didn't put glue in the bottom. They put the they press the spline in, and, that was it. and then they put glue on top of the weaving into the spline. Deep. Is, that, so, is, is that usually adequate? Uh, for some it is. It's, yeah. Or else do they it, pop it's, loose? And it's a matter of which glue they use. Yeah. And a hundred years ago, like, who knows? So I'm on a little island in New Hampshire. It's six miles off the coast. Technically, technically it's part of Rye, but it's really more part of the Alza Shoals. It's Star Island. <laughs> Get it all, right? Yeah, Breton, I, where's Bretton Woods? Bretton Woods is way oh, up in the I White Mountains. Yeah, White Mountains. I have I have three yeah. live viewers, and and they can write to me. Uh -huh. So someone used to stay up in the White Mountains. Right. This this is far east in New Hampshire as you can get. <laughs> yep. Anything after that's the Atlantic Ocean. Portugal. And then, I'm told. And, and then Portugal. <laughs> you, you've been told correctly. So we have various projects going on here. This is the crash. This is the uh, getting this old piece out. <coughs> and somebody over here is weaving in a new one, which takes eight to twelve hours. It's a lovely day. The sun isn't too too much. It's not too hot. Here's someone else that's that's farther along. And you have to make sure everything's tapped together tightly. You just keep everything moist. And go around and around and around. And hopefully your fingers are tough. <laughs> and then eventually your the piece you're working with runs out and you have to splice on another one. We also have a couple of interested spectators <laughs> smiling. Maybe they want to help, who knows? This, this group will be here for several days. You want to sit in? I'm the, apparently the recruiting agent. Yeah, I can see <laughs> <laughs> We happily take volunteers. They do. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's doing a documentary next year. You're going to be a movie star. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like basket weaving. <laughs> you better give us royalties. Yeah. See, Sina, have, Sina, have you done basket weaving? I have not done that. No, I'm, I'm talking to Sina, who's in, who's in Virginia. So how, how close is this to basket weaving? Is this a lot more, more difficult? I think so. Because you have to have everything very snug, and, and baskets can be looser. Oh, baskets give you more room to get your fingers right. in. Right, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> and imagine basket material is a little thicker, so you don't, you're not hurting your fingers as much gripping something little. And it's round. And it's round. Well, not ours, but the baskets I've made were always And you probably don't have to use a knife to uh, to pry <laughs> and pull. <laughs> All right, so this is this is perfect timing. Jean, we need your advice because we are at, an, at the end of the, our rope, so to speak. And it's also at the seam. Well, not at the end. Oh, no, oh, you have I'm more. Just oh, you just, you're just starting it. Or if I was from Massachusetts, I'd say you're just statting it. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts, so I, like they're statting. I'm finishing off the here. Right, oh, I see. Yep, yep. What you, could have, what you can do is, like this, tuck this under here. Mm -hmm. And use your knife to get it from Yeah, I wait until I'm a little bit sure. Yeah, okay. For me. And then what I do is I fold it under. Who is green? Thanks for sending all those hearts. It's appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> who's, who's green? What, a green thing? Oh. Now I'm talking to my viewers. Oh. I think Cena might be green. I have a green twisty, and I was wondering. Oh. Uh huh. Yep, me. Cena's green. And these. So, so the viewers get different colors. Oh, 
and then they tap the screen and they can send hearts showing that they're enjoying what they're watching. See, if you ever have some free time, you can come up to this island. You could, you could work with this group, or you can come out here for an event. I'm always trying to recruit people to come out here, too. So we just flipped this one over. Well, I didn't flip it over. And you can see how these uh, little wire ties have been used to splice when one piece ends. Then you use a wire tie to splice on uh, another piece. And so they overlap a little bit. Yeah, well, come on up someday. No, it's, it would involve a bit of a plane trip for you, but you could manage it. So I can see getting this set up, especially this wrapping around the edge, would take a while. And then you have the more advanced one over here, which is a lot farther along. Just weaving in and out. And these chairs are, are tapered. So you have to do something a little tricky at the end, I imagine. When you get toward the... Uh, either when you start or when you finish, you have to do this... This kind of, what, do you, what would you call it? I don't know what you call it, but I bet Jean does. Well, whatever you call it. You have to do a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. There we go. Bob's your uncle if you're from Canada. Zena, do you really go up to Maine every year? That's so cool. Well, our season ends, the last day here is, is the 18th of September, so I'm not sure. When's blueberry season? Is that in this earlier? Yeah, it's over. I think blueberry season's earlier. It was very cool this year. Was not enough rain. Dry. Yeah, too dry. Yeah, the brown blueberries mounted Thanks, Avers. Really? And wolf so the people over here, will, for the people that have joined recently, will come back to this section. I really like that area. We go on. And this is a chair. You're, you're on your bucket list. This is a chair that is in has the process. Four, has four strands and needs two more. Four strands and needs two more. So this chair is a work in progress. Could use some blue paint too, or red paint, whichever layer you want to fix. Yeah, it's just a shame somebody painted it. <clears throat> and these these two are getting their edging. They're getting finished up. Yeah. This is a wider piece going around the edge to cover up the holes. Cena loves the blue chair. She gave us a heart. And if the hole isn't big enough, we have to use an awl to make space. Yep. An awl is an awl. <laughs> I call it a nice pick. Got a, little a nice, ice a nice ice pick would do. I'm, a, I'm old enough to remember ice. My grandmother used to get ice deliveries. Oh, yeah? My friend used to deliver ice when he was little. Yeah, see, now these chairs, ice. we're going to take a little, little detour. So it's, it's, we're outside. It's nice to work outside. Here we are outside. Yeah. Here, here, is, here are the, uh, the rocking porch chairs that also get, get help. But those chairs that we're, they're working on are from the dining room. Yeah, no, the, the ones we're working on today are from the dining room. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, slight distraction. Spectacular view ahead. Morning. Seagull. This is what you get when you come to Star Island. You get a spectacular view, no matter where, no matter where you are standing. You get a spec. That's the harbor. This is looking west to the mainland. We're looking at the state of New Hampshire and the state of Maine. Over across there with that tower, that's in Maine. This is a long view of the porch. A little dark. Gorgeous weather here. A little bit of a breeze. It's going to get windier. The sun's going to come out. There's a cold front coming along. All right, we're going to take a, sh a slight detour because people are wondering where these chairs are coming from. And I'm going to put my head in the dining room door. Breakfast was at 8.30, so almost everybody is gone at this point. Let's see if we have any light. Yes, we do. 
So breakfast is over for almost everybody, and you can see where all these chairs live. And hopefully I'm not cut off. Breakfast right now is buffet style. Hi from Moscow. You probably haven't seen this before. This is an old hotel from the 1880s. And it's, it's fairly authentic. Not a lot has changed. Uh, this is not a resort because if you had a resort, you'd have your own bathroom and a sink and a shower every day and probably a carpet in your room. And so you don't get any of that here. Your uh, bathroom's down the hall, the shower's every other day, down in the basement. Uh, you eat with everybody else, you sit down, and, and whatever the meal is, is brought out. You don't place any orders. So you eat, you eat at 8, and 12.30, and 6.30, and the bell rings. Voila, the bell, <clears throat> the bell rings, and you all march into dinner, or lunch, or whatever the meal is. So yeah, it's more, a lot more like camping and you have to come with the correct ex expectation so you're not disappointed. We have a, uh, a very busy truck crew. <clears throat> this is one of the side roads on the island. It's all little dirt tracks. Today is a compost and trash day. <laughs> Recycling day. So they have to go around collecting everything and end up at the pier and it gets hauled off by one of our boats. Speaking of boats, here's one of our boats arriving now. That's the smaller of the two boats. So it's going to have more passengers than freight. We get a, we get a food order this afternoon, probably about four, and I'll probably be part of that helping to, uh, to unload the boat. So there's a lot of manual labor here. This is a very simple island. There's no forklift or paved roads or anything like that. We'll take a little more tour. So you can stay in the main building, <clears throat> or you might be assigned to one of these uh, smaller buildings, one of these cottages. And there's some other housing too. It's all very simple though. Basically, you don't want to spend any time in your room because it's just for sleeping. You come out here and hang out, or you hang out in the lobby. And you can watch people doing all kinds of interesting things. <laughs> but it's getting there. Yeah, that's really good. I watched half of that. It was half done yesterday, so I finished the other half yesterday. No, no, you have your own room, Sina. Yeah, And very few rooms are singles, so most rooms have at least two beds. And most beds are twins. But the, it, all, it all varies. Some rooms are one double, some rooms are three twins or, or a double and a twin. Um, the, the, the rooms aren't like in a regular hotel, they're all the same shape. The rooms here are never the same shape. <laughs> yeah, this building, these buildings were built in 1870, 1880, 1890 depending which building you're, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah a little history lesson. When we put the, uh, when we put the staircase in the back, we had newspapers from 1895 embedded in the walls. So we know there was construction going on then. All right, Carolyn's going to give us a, a history lesson. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, a lot of the Victorian wooden hotels on the coast. So, so Cena commented that we must have a resident ghost. Oh yes, there is one here. There's more than one. Oh really? Oh yeah. There's one out on Duck Island, I know that. <laughs> and, and the astute viewers will see me, my reflection in the, in the window there. Oh, please tell. Rachel. Um, well, let's. Uh, are you going to tell about your, the ghost you know about? No, the ghost. I don't know about that. I was going to tell about a pirate. All right, let's hear about a pirate, then we'll tell about a ghost. Rachel Walls was from Boston, and she met George. And, uh, and what year was this? Uh, 17... 
I can't remember. I have so many dates in my brain. She's Seventeen quite... something. Anyways, um, she wasn't a very um, a nice girl. She used to steal things to make a living. And then she met George, and he saved her. And they came out here and decided to become pilot pirates. And uh, and she used to. Um, stand on the ship and holler for help and then when people would come to help her the crew would come up and take over the other boat and they were pirates and they did that for about a year or so and then George went out to sea and never came back so Rachel had to go back to Boston and she got caught stealing again yeah. so they tried her and they she said I want to be tried as a pirate she was 29 years old I think she was that, that sounds like you can get the death sentence yeah they hung her uh, they, they hanged her and she um, she was 29, and uh, she was the last one they ever, that ever happened to in Massachusetts. I need to Rachel Wall. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go right, back. Right no, 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 I'm not that kind. Oh. Right. All right, so Sina. Do you want this something? In terms of ghosts, in Cottage E, which is a very old building, the people that would go up and make up rooms, thank you got a thank you from Sina, and some hand, hand claps. So, so there's, there's definitely been numerous reports of people coming down the stairs in Cottage E and being pushed. So that's, that's one, one ghost. Then there's the haunted Vaughn Cottage. Vaughn Cottage is haunted. And the woman I, that used to work here, and I know her very well. These are too long. Yeah, no, this is all serious. This is reports. And the woman I used to, to work with here... <clears throat> and she had the job in Vaughn Cottage as the curator, would, would feel things. There's a night crew, they'd go on patrol at night, and every hour they'd go and do the rounds, and maybe like at 2 in the morning they'd find the light on upstairs in Vaughn Cottage, and Vaughn Cottage is locked up at night, and they'd been doing rounds all night long, and now the light's on. So, so how did the light get on? And when Sarah was sitting in Vaughn Cottage on a very calm day, no wind at all, she'd be sitting downstairs, the upstairs door would slam. Or she might hear some footsteps. So definitely, Vaughn Cottage <coughs> has all the uh, artifacts from, from years ago, up in the attic. So yes, yeah, very spooky. And, and I only know half the stories. There was the Ghost, Ghost Hunters TV show was out here. Yeah. And they did some studies, and, and they had the, uh, the door slam on them while they were doing the TV taping. And they also found on the second floor of the hotel, we have a little corner with uh, a, lot of, a lot of children's books. This is the oceanic part. The oceanic part. And, and they were re doing some long-term re recording there, and they heard a voice, and when they analyzed it later, it was a child's voice saying something in reply to one of their comments as they were talking. Wow. I didn't know that. That's a good story. That is. Yes. Isn't there one about Uncle Oscar, too? Well, I don't know about Uncle Oscar. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised. There was supposed to be. He had a special room. I don't know which one it was. I think it was Cotted C has one of the fireplaces. So, Cena, if you like that kind of thing, here's another reason to visit. Forget the blueberry picking. Come out here. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. You, you've seen a little bit of it. So there, there you have to, is the job of keeping, <coughs> keeping everything moist. Back to the subject of, of chair repair. Yes. Here's the, the bucket with a stuff soaking. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, 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 here's some supplies over in the, in the corner and water, so they're ready to go. Yes, to soak 20 minutes, but not more than two hours. Then it would get too soft. Right. Or it changes color. No. Oh. So you can see what's happening underneath here. Those are all the ties. The blueberries won't haunt you safer. Yeah, well, that's true. But, but, Sina, you don't have to go into Cottage E. You can stay somewhere else. So this is what happens when you have a joint. You have to start a new piece. The strands come 6 feet to 16 feet in length. Can you order the length you want? No. It's just a matter of luck. Right. There are several companies in the United States, but I use a company in Connecticut. It's all imported. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, Cap Hi, only, Cappy. Only place the rattan vine grows, which is this is what this is. Well, well, see, is it in the Indian Ocean area? Cena says she'll sleep outside in a tent. <laughs> now, now, Cena, you have to realize yeah, something. We we do have, have wild animals on this island, ah. and at night the muskrats come night, out and have a party with the seagulls who wander around on the lawn looking for treats. <laughs> Like muskrat love? <laughs> it could be muskrat love. Anyone that's good at singing can sing muskrat love. Three, two, one. <laughs> I can't. Nobody can sing. No one can sing, so you'll have to wait for some other time for the talent Not show. All of them are screwed down, so some are. Gotcha. Yeah, that was a, it's a Phillips. Oh, it is the I've seen muskrats Phillips? come out, yeah. oh, sorry. and they gather uh, grass <laughs> in their mouth for their their nest, and then they go um, back. We're right here on the island. Oh, right, right here where you're standing. Wow. There's a little, little nest underneath this porch <laughs> and underneath the first aid station and underneath any place that has a little little yes. area. Um, the rats fortunately live over by the dump in the summer so you don't get to see them. But they do come wandering in the fall and the winter looking to sniff and get into the kitchen. That's where the good smells are and they start to chew at the doors. And then they have to repair the doors and the screens, and sometimes they get inside and chew holes in the floor. Oh. That was my job once, to, to stop up all the rat holes. Really? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah, that's serious. Seriously. Serious. You can't have them coming in in the summer. No, you can't. Well. So, so Cena has seen frozen muskrat for sale in Virginia. Really? Why, really? Why, why, what would you do with a frozen muskrat, Cena? I hope it's not for consumption. Virginia or West Virginia? <laughs> yeah, Virginia or West Virginia. No, this is Virginia. But maybe it was to the west of Central Virginia. <laughs> Where things start to get a little different. They would chuck in some places. I think it would be pretty greasy. I don't think I'd want to eat a woodchuck. No. Well, he ate my vegetables, so I think he must Oh, be so yeah, vegetarian woodchuck. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they tend to do that. All right, well, we'll come around to the other side again for anyone that's just joined recently. I'm doing a live video. Oh, my. Thank you, though. So here's Gene still, still attacking, still tap, tap, tap. Isn't that a song? Tap, tap, tapping away. This one I can tell is going to be a six to eight hour one. It's because the glue is in. Because the glue, they not only glued in the groove, but they glued out. You opened it, so so this Cena. This glued down to the wood. <laughs> a dozen frozen. <laughs> so Cena just wrote a long message. She was at a truck stop. She opened up a freezer for a popsicle, and found a dozen frozen muskrats for sale. Oh my gosh. For for consumption. Here's here's the response, Cena. Give me that funny look again. <laughs> yeah, dozen frozen muskrats. Vacation month. So, so I think I think you better go up to Maine and look for blueberries. We get a lot of muskrats next door in Appledore. That's right. They're over on Smutty too. They're actually here too. Oh, they're everywhere. They eradicate them as much as they can. We haven't. The trapper hasn't come out for several years. Yeah. You know who used to do it was. Um, uh, well, some man would come out and and come back a few weeks later and, and pick up the traps for study. For pelts? For pelts? Pelts, not pels. <laughs> yeah, that that would repel me. Sorry. <laughs> the muskrats were loose, not wrapped. So they're just lying there in their fur in the freezer with the po with the popsicles. <laughs> See, Cena, Cena. Are the popsicles wrapped. Cena, Cena. We have to answer some questions here, Cena. <laughs> were, were, the, were there popsicles with the muskrats, or was it just a freezer of muskrats? I, I think you're breaking up this this group into laughter. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So I, I know when the green heart stops, she's typing. Yep, actually, this one, yep. There's all really stuff in there. I, that's, I know, I tried. <laughs> and just for your information, when we put the new seats oh, so on, we don't screw them in because we don't want to do that again. I was hoping somebody would speak So she, was, she did see the popsicles in with the muskrats and, and declined to eat a, a popsicle. Smart. <laughs> She's very smart. Her her name on her, her screen name here is Forgery Expert. Yeah, we've, we've decided that we're going to leave she, the She'll do test. She'll testify in court on handwriting and that. She'll perform handwriting analysis <laughs> and testify in court. No, she's not the forger. <laughs> Cena's not the right. You're not the forger, Cena. You're, Actually, if you're an expert at identifying forgery, you can also be one. Forgery. Yeah, muskrats thrown on top of popsicles. That's. Uh, you know, that's something you could. This is up. this is probably one of the funny. This is probably the second funniest periscope I've ever done. <laughs> wow, but that's something you can't make up. Can't make that story up. No. And I hope you haven't been back to that truck stop. <laughs> how much were the muskrats? Oh, right, how much were the muskrats? <laughs> We could ship our muskrats down there and they could sell them. Yeah, yeah well, you have to catch them first. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gotta have a lot of snakes. Them here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could, we could add it to the, uh, the menu on that food tent Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Muskrat flavored ice cream is next. Yeah, Cena says she's not the forger. And she also says she has a document to prove it. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> That's great. Issued by the state prison system. Ooh, nice. I'm familiar with those. <laughs> I worked for ice. Okay. I think I think this scope is over. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to find something to leave you looking at. Let's see. Find a good uh, a good ending shot here. Cena, thank you so much for keeping us company and and also entertained. <laughs> we'll, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye. Is she driving a truck, or is she just at a truck stop?